Gentlemen, we have called you together to inform you that we are going to overthrow the United States government. You still think that jet fuel brought down the World Trade Center? Does anybody else see a problem here? If the government has nothing to hide, why are they so afraid to answer a few questions? This story does not add up. As difficult as it was for me, I have come to an inescapable and profoundly disturbing conclusion. I believe that an elite group of people and the corporations they run have gained control over not just our energy, food supply, education, and health care, but over virtually every aspect of our lives. And they do it by controlling the world of finance, not by creating more value, but by actually controlling the source of money. When I followed the money, I found that it took me up the levels of a pyramid. Here we are at the bottom level going about our daily lives. Above us is government, people who are given a monopoly on force and use it to tax and control us whether or not we agree. But who controls them? At the next level are the corporations. Many would say that it is now corporations and not nation states that rule the world. They call it a corporatocracy. To acquire the world's resources and control the markets, this corporatocracy must have access to cheap money. The big corporations get their loans at special rates from the big banks, which means that those who control the major banks, the money elite, ultimately control the corporations. As I follow the money, I've learned that almost everything I once believed about money is simply not true. It's um, interesting how few questions we actually ask about very everyday things, like when we go into a bank and we ask for a loan of, say, $50,000, 50,000 pounds, what actually happens? You see, most people live their lives based on a kind of vague image of what happens. What actually happens is you ask for 50,000 pounds, they type into your account 50,000 pounds. That's all they do. They don't... Uh, mint any coins, they don't print any money, they don't move any precious metal anywhere, they just put £50,000 into your account on a computer screen. From that moment, you start paying interest on money that has never, does not, and will never exist. It turns out that banks actually have about nine times as much money loaned out as they have on reserve in their vaults. This is possible because of what's referred to as fractional reserve lending. The way it works is that the Federal Reserve, or the central bank in any country, is legally allowed to determine the amount a bank must have on reserve. In the U.S. it's currently around 10%. So if you deposit $10,000 into the bank, the bank sets aside 10%, or $1,000, and then loans out the rest of your money. The way it works is, say another person comes into the bank and asks for a car loan of $9,000. At this moment, the bank loans out the $9,000 from your original deposit. It isn't there anymore. The borrower then pays the person selling the car, and they go deposit the money into another bank, which is part of the same central banking system. This $9,000 is treated as a new deposit, and the process continues. The money gets redeposited and reloaned until the initial deposit of $10,000 becomes $100,000. The banking system just created $90,000 by loaning out your money. Apparently it began with the goldsmiths in the 17th century when people were trading in gold. Gold was heavy to carry around so people stored the actual metal in vaults and traded receipts instead. Those receipts were the first paper money. Since only a few people would withdraw their gold at any given time, the vault owners, basically the new bankers, began creating receipts for more metals than they actually held. They loaned out those receipts and charged interest on money, gold, that they didn't really have. That's how our so-called fractional reserve system was born. In this system, the bankers get to make up money out of nothing, while the rest of us have to work hard to earn it. It has created a modern form of serfdom where the massive society is now working to pay off their debt to the banks. Under this fractional reserve scheme, we inevitably become debt slaves to a ruling class of financial elite. Not because they are better or smarter than anyone else, but because they have rigged the system to benefit themselves at the expense of most people on the planet. Catherine Austin Fitz is an expert on this issue. She was an assistant secretary of housing and urban development under President George Bush Sr. and then an advisor to the Clinton administration. Let's set up a game of Monopoly and you want to buy Park Place. Um, what I can continually do is just print money, give myself more money, lower the value of your money by printing more, no matter how hardworking you are, or how successful you are, I can always end up buying you for free. No matter how hardworking you are, or how successful you are, I can always end up buying you for free. No matter how hardworking you are, or how successful you are, I can always end up buying you for free. See, he prints more IOUs without any more gold, loans them out for interest, makes a pretty penny, and nobody is the wiser. Unless... Everybody wanted their gold back at the same time. No, 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 no. Th that's my gold. Not anymore. What are you talking about? I'd like to redeem my IOUs, please. Thank you very much. 
Because he was a thief? Because, Pile, an evil invention was born. Man discovered how to turn worthless paper into gold. Thus was invented the ultimate machine to steal real money and enslave all the nations on Earth. It's alive! Oh, now, come on. You're just being dramatic. I, I, I mean, I lost my house, but what is that? Explain. A nuclear power plant? Mm-hmm. Produces lots of electricity and little pollution. An invention for the good of humanity. Okay, but what's this have to do with... Three, two... Holy atomic energy! A discovery more powerful than anything man had yet conceived. It can be used for good or evil. Now, Unlike Einstein, the goldsmith's discovery has been kept a closely guarded secret. It was never intended for you to see. This discovery is called Fractional Reserve Banking. In the wrong hands, it's more powerful than the nuclear bomb in its ability to completely and utterly destroy a nation who is subjected to its perversion. No, 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 no. It is time we stop this evil secret and the men behind it. You're being ridiculous. Before America is destroyed forever. Be to leave it, Pop. No, 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 no. I just want my dog back. Damn it. That's it. I give up. Let them live in chains. No, Harvin. The tree of liberty must be refreshed from time to time with the blood of patriots and tyrants. Thomas Jefferson? Mr. President, how do I get him to understand? As we did, son, remain vigilant. Too many have hidden the truth, and the light of our liberty dims with every passing day. Quickly, take my horse. Show him. Wait, show me what? Where are we going? <laughs> Stallion of Libertad! Grab on the Holy Wind! Oh, where are Battle of Waterloo! Hold on, we gotta get through! A money machine! There it is! Hey, is that the same people? Rich banker men from Germany flying under the banner of the Red Sheep. They finance both sides of the war. We must hurry! That's him, the Red Shield courier! Shoot him! No! I'm not shooting anyone. Damn it, Pop! What? He beat everyone back with the news of the war and told England that Napoleon won. The Red Shield bankers in London pretended that England was doomed and started selling their English stocks. The English went into a selling frenzy to get rid of worthless English money. But the English won, right? Of course they won. But it was a trick by Red Shield. They waited until the stocks plummeted to pennies and then bought England back for nearly nothing. What? They did that? How? When the English leaders found out, they had no choice but to give themselves over to the Red Shield. Their money was gone, and they were slaves to the Red Shield war debt. Since that time, the English have been paying their national taxes directly to the Red Shield private bankers. The people have no idea. But the bankers bragged about what they did to us, laughing at us all the way to the bank. Why, it's the best business I've ever done. If I can control a nation's wealth, I care not who makes its laws. Is this what Jefferson wanted to show me? No, I... Look... They're in America, too? The Red Shield Banks are here, Pop! Seeking a way to conquer our American dream. The dream you have, Pop. The dream of three men. They tried to take over our country many times and failed because Jefferson and the Patriots vowed to stop the evil tyrants at all costs. 
my authority of eternal God, he would not let the bankers win here. To preserve our independence, we must not let our rulers load us with perpetual debt. We must make our choice between economy and liberty or profusion and servitude. Wow. I place economy among the first and most important of Republican virtues, and public debt as the greatest of the dangers to be feared. It is incumbent on every generation to pay its own debts as it goes. We must have a central bank to secure this country's finances. If the American people ever allow private banks to control the issue of their money, first by inflation and then by deflation, the banks and corporations that will grow up around them will deprive the people of their property until their children will wake up homeless on the very continent their fathers conquered. Jefferson, you're mad. This country will have a central bank. Who's that? America's first secretary of treasury. Alexander Hamilton? Not for long. Aaron Burr, Thomas Jefferson's vice president. They didn't take too kindly to our first sec treasury. Sweet shot, Burr. <laughs> the first attempt at a central bank only lasted 20 years and we shut it down. But the bankers tried again against all hickory President Andrew Jackson. You are a den of vipers and thieves. I intend to rout you out, and by the eternal God, I will rout you out. After surviving an assassination attempt, Jackson finally defeated the bank in 1836. When asked what was the greatest accomplishment in his life, Old Hickory replied, I killed the bank. And those were his last words. I killed the bank. And with real money backed with real gold, our country experienced the greatest boom in any nation's history. Oh, it was beautiful, pal. But the bankers, greedy for more power and wealth, were concocting their most ambitious plan yet to once and for all take control of the finances of the United States. In 1910, a secret meeting was held at the J.P. Morgan estate on Jekyll Island off the coast of Georgia. This meeting was so secretive, so concealed from government and public knowledge that the ten attendees used code names. <laughs> I am clearly the richest man, so I should be the one to run the super secret central bank. I own all the oil in America. I'm clearly richer than you will ever be, hula girl. I should run the super secret central bank. You're nothing compared to me, lube job. I shall run the secret bank. Silence! Supreme Master Leader, I didn't know you were gonna be here. I'm not. Neither are you, dumbass. Oh, yeah, right, right. He's so smart. None of you shall run the bank. We have failed in the past because of openness. This time, the key to success is secrecy. The people must believe that they run the bank. Yes, brilliant! A sneak attack. What's the plan? We first create panic, then we show them the solution. With our man in office and well-planned timing, we will have our central bank. And so the people think it is theirs. We shall christen it Federal. The Federal Reserve. <laughs> <laughs> Struck on December 23rd, 1913. When most of our Congress were at home eating fruitcake, these bastards, I, I mean bankers, presented their treasonous act to their newly elected accomplice, Woodrow Wilson, who had fortuitously already agreed to sign it before he was even elected. Wait, the IRS? I thought we always had the IRS. No, pile. They did this to us, too. The Fed now has the exclusive power to print America's money. They loan this money to our banks and our government at interest, putting immediate debt on our own money, printing more and more, so each dollar they print becomes worth less than the one before. Merry Christmas. <laughs> What in the hell is that? That pie is how our government now must pay back these debts to the Fed. Your taxes do not go to your government. They don't? 